Illinois Supreme Court rules that cannabis aroma alone is insufficient probable cause to search a vehicle, you guys. That's right. Moments ago, the Illinois Supreme Court ruled cannabis aroma alone is insufficient probable cause to search a vehicle. That's right. The decision stems from two consolidated cases, People versus Redmond and People versus Molina, in which law enforcement used the smell of cannabis as probable cause to search the individual's vehicle. Once cannabis was found, both individuals were charged with not storing the found cannabis in an odor-proof container you guys. The conclusion on the ruling for People versus Redmond stated in quotes, we hold that the odor of burnt cannabis alone is insufficient to provide probable cause for police officers to perform a warrantless search of a vehicle. We also hold that the totality of the facts and circumstances known to Officer Combs did not provide probable cause to search Redmond's vehicle. Therefore, the circuit court correctly granted the motion suppressing the evidence confiscated from Redmond. And accordingly, we affirm the appellate court's decision affirming the trial court's order suppressing the evidence seized in the warrantless search of Redmond's car, they say, end quote. Justice P. Scott Neville Jr. delivered the judgment of the court with, with the opinion and Chief Justice Mary Jane Thies and Justices David K. Overstreet, Joy Virginia Cunningham, Elizabeth M. Rochford, and Mary K. O'Brien concurred in the judgment and opinion. Justice Lisa Holder uh, White took no part in the discussion. The opinion on the ruling uh, stated, you guys, oh man, get ready for this. In this case, we must determine after the recent changes to Illinois' cannabis laws, whether a police officer's detection of an odor of burnt cannabis, considered alone or in conjunction with other facts, provides probable cause to conduct a warrantless search of a vehicle. Illinois State Police Officer Hayden Combs conducted a search of Ryan Redmond's vehicle based on inter alia his detection of the strong odor of burnt cannabis emitting from the vehicle. The state preliminary argues that Combs had probable cause to suspect that a search of the vehicle would uncover evidence that cannabis was improperly contained in the vehicle or more likely uncover evidence that Redmond used cannabis on his trip from Des Moines, Iowa to Chicago. See, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right, you guys. That's right. Uh, I'm going to skip this. No, no, keep on going. Yep, yep, yep. And the, there we go. There, oh, well, back down, back down. And just There we go. Combs searched Redmond's car and found one gram of cannabis inside the center console in a plastic bag. And the state charged Redmond with unlawful possession of cannabis in violation of Section 4 of the Cannabis Control Act. And that is 720 ILCS 550-4A of West 2020 and unlawful possession of cannabis by a driver in violation of section 11-502.15B of the Illinois Vehicle Code. Redmond filed a motion to suppress the cannabis and the Henry County Circuit Court granted the motion and the appellate court affirmed uh, holding that ho holding that recent changes to the law pertaining to cannabis made the odor of burnt cannabis standing alone insufficient to justify a warrantless search of an automobile, you guys. And uh, they also say that we allowed the state's petition for leave to appeal pursuant to Illinois Supreme Court Rule 315, effective October 1st of 2021, and we also allowed the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU of Illinois, the National Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, and the Illinois Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers to file an amici curiae brief on behalf of Redmond's, Redmond's, uh, Redmond's position. For the following reasons, we affirm the judgment of the appellate court, they stated. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm, you guys in january the illinois supreme court heard oral arguments for the two consolidated cases you guys man oh man oh man this is great news for people out there in the great state of illinois and i can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this yeah in Des Moines uh, in illinois the <laughs> mm -hmm. no, 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 Moines, iowa the S's are Jason throws the S in there. I love it. I love the Des Moines. At least I don't turn my S's into Z's, you guys. You know, I, I think 
this is a, a pretty significant precedent because other courts have held that the odor of unburnt marijuana is not probable cause. But generally, they say if it's the odor of burnt marijuana in a vehicle, automatic DUI, DUI exception kicks in, and the cops can search for evidence of intoxication, including more marijuana. Um, so I think it's quite fantastic that the uh, Illinois Supreme Court said uh, that the odor of burnt cannabis alone without more is insufficient probable cause to search the whole vehicle. And that is a precedent that I think is going to be cited in other jurisdictions uh, to try to persuade the courts to take a more enlightened approach toward it. I mean, the fact is the odor of burnt marijuana lingers for hours, even days. And so it, it doesn't really provide any probable cause of uh, that there's going to be evidence of a crime at the time of the search. It, it's just, you know, really stale. Mm -hmm. Thank, you you think, it, uh, Thank you for clarifying. Thank you for clarifying that, uh, Omar. Omar. I did so, not know. As you know, Omar, we, we've watched this progress. California went from the smell of, of uh, burnt marijuana outside of an apartment mm -hmm. was not probable cause to search. And as you know, with my son, uh, the smell of marijuana led to a traffic stop and a field sobriety test. So you're, you're right. They, in California, they attacked the driving under the influence, which means, okay, if I find it, I can now inventory your vehicle and find more evidence, and that's how they wrap you. This one's going to be interesting because, uh, you know, anybody who smokes pot in their car, the next day you're going to smell it, okay? And mm -hmm. human beings are not quantifiable enough in their, in their sense of smell to know, was this just recent or, I mean, this is just fuel to argue that it was an improper search. And, you know, the lesson is, if you suspect they're under the influence, bring them out and do a field sobriety test. Uh, and even then, it's a losing adventure because people with, you know, it, smoking weed is different than being drunk. It's just not the same. Yeah, there's and no the, correlation. Yeah. They've been trying to prove it for years that THC yeah. is positively correlated to intoxication and impairment, and there is no correlation. Actually, like... You can be a skilled uh, stoner and have no impairment, exhibit no impairment, mm -hmm. and be fully yep. intoxicated and high as fuck. Yep. Yeah. Or you can be a little old lady who ate a 100 milligram gummy and she can't find her ass with both hands. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh. There, it's a spectrum, you have right? More training on how to detect this. And they just don't want to. They they got lazy. They got used to, oh, I smell weed. You're going to jail. And now they start throwing these cases out. They got to start actually doing some work and field sobriety tests and, and forensic tests mm -hmm. and bring in experts. They don't want to do that. So this thing is going to put a, a big turd in their punch bowl, which is good. It needs to be there. Oh, well, yeah. Really, the, the Illinois Supreme Court is saying, stop wasting your time on cannabis. Focus on real crime. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, yeah, they have plenty uh, of it out this. there. I love this. As many times as I've been uh, racially profiled uh, for driving while black in Illinois, this is fantastic news to me. So, mm -hmm. big ups to you Never smoked a blunt before you drove, right, Rico? Never in my life. <laughs> we're past that. You, we're past that. You limitations on that. That's twenty years. Fuck yeah, I did a whole oh, lot of that boy. shit. Oh boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, there's a big difference in smoking a blunt in the car a week ago and it's smelling like stale smoke, and you yeah, can roll, over and roll the windows the down, and the smoke starts billowing out, which is what happened to us in college. Hey, hey, yeah, especially with the blunt, it sticks <laughs> to everything. That was probably. You know, I'll, I'll give them that. <laughs> the Spicoli you... scenario is probably probable cause. That yeah. was that, that you... was that was a flagrant foul on our part. If you hold your breath long enough, the the smoke will dissipate. Yeah, and then, and then it just, just saying all, all the blackness from that blunt and that and the tobacco just mm -hmm. goes straight to your yum, mm -hmm. right straight to your lungs. Mm -hmm. Shout yum, out to the tar. Yum, yum, mm -hmm. yum. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this is fantastic news. I think this is gonna this is this is huge, huge, huge news. I appreciate the tip on this one, Cole. Yes, Much love, good looking out, brother. Cole. Shout out to the Cole memo out there, you guys. And uh, we're going to in keep... Illinois, celebrate. That's right. Yes, yes. celebrate by uh, smoking in your car before you drive. For after enough. you drive. Jesus. And either way, you I would don't... say after. You know, like many cops that haven't gotten the memo, it takes a while for these like court opinions to be like written up and disseminated in their training. So it's probably better to uh, take. I mean, the, the... they could always go to our website and just print out the whole, the whole, the whole decision and just ride around with it in their car, Omar. 
Yeah, well, yeah, it's super it, duper, but I don't know if you've ever tried to correct a police officer on the law. They don't really love it, and you end up having to prove that in court anyway, but it's just really shitty to end up going to jail for something that you're going to get released on because they no longer have probable cause and finding mm -hmm. something like a probation hold because guess what? You're not going to get out of that violation of probation. So it's just yeah. best to just try to avoid the situation. Well, well, just remember, don't break more than one law at a time. Ever. No, this, is, this is something that very uh, this is, it's a, it's another huge come up because a lot of places like that you can't smoke in places that you don't own like you uh, like in Chicago where there's a bunch of high rises and stuff yep. like that you can't smoke in your apartment or anything like that so if you don't own anything else like where else are you gonna smoke legally now you can smoke in your car go hot box the shit out of that motherfucker with your homeboys homegirls and um, not get in trouble for it and if they try to they're breaking the fucking constitution yep Amazing. yeah that they are. Hot boxing for the win.